Well, I want to come and show you a little something too, because tonight is the final Thursday night global masterclass for this season. So welcome everybody. And thank you for joining us. And as you know, we bring conversations from around the tech world and tonight's no different. And you might know this too. My name is Cher Jones and I am a corporate social media trainer and the founder of Socially Active Training. Right now I'm here in Toronto. But the question is, where are you? Let me know in the chat. Where are you hailing from? Is it Toronto, New York, Lagos, Jamaica? Where are you? Let me know in the chat, right? Get clickety clickety. I want to see where's it going? Where are you guys at? Let me know in the chat. See, I, I got, I, I don't have bars, but I'll throw in a rhyme here and there. So I see Seattle, Calgary, Toronto, TO, Boston, Edmonton, South Carolina, Vancouver, Bay Area, California. I love this. You guys are all over the place. And that's what it is when you have a global masterclass like this one, Mississauga, North Charlotte. Woo, everybody's from all over the place. Montreal, I'm loving this. Thank you guys so much for joining. We want you to stay chatty tonight because we are discussing everything. And I mean everything, no holds bars about climbing the co corporate ladder in tech. There's always an existing culture within organizations today that can prevent diverse growth. So we're going to be talking about how the C-suite can encourage career growth, ultimately getting more black professionals into leadership roles. That's what we want. But before we move ahead, I do want to thank our partner, RBC, for bringing yet another thought-provoking conversation to BPTN. So thank you so much, RBC. We appreciate you. And, you know, I'm always a little bit nosy. So let's talk about your careers, shall we? I have a question for you. In your, and this is like, I'm getting re real right now. I'm ready to sip some tea with y'all because I want to know, in your current organization, if there was an opportunity to be promoted to the next level, you know, one of those opportunities that seemed exactly perfectly suited for your ex mix of experience. Here's the thing I want to ask. Were you given that promotion? Yes or no in the chat. So at some point where you work right now, there is a perfect opportunity that just seemed like the stars aligned and it was just for you. Did you get it or not? Yes or no in the chat. This is what we're talking about today. So let me know in the chat. No, and I'm, and you know what, we've heard way too many no's, so we, but there are some yeses too, which I appreciate. So um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about navigating around that space, getting more yeses than no's, and that th those no's suck. So the thing is, organizations like BPTN are here to empower you to get more black leaders in the companies we work for right now. So this is an exciting time and I love it. And I love Andrea's answer. No, that's why I opened my own company. Girl, I feel you. I hear you. Far too many no's than yeses. And that's another reality that we're trying to change here. And you know, it doesn't happen overnight, but there are things changing and we are here to empower one another. And while you're getting all chatty chatty in the chat, one of the things that you want to do is about building your network. So make sure you drop your LinkedIn profiles within the chat because the network, when you got a network, you know, you're working. All right. I got another question for you guys. Have you ever, and so this is something that's kind of like looking in the mirror for a second. Have you ever in your role capacity helped somebody else climb the corporate ladder? We know the concept of reaching back, but have you ever reached back? So that's what I want to know. So that's the new question. And I'm already seeing yeses because that's, that's what it's about. And, and then, and let me see. No, I went to a company. Let's see. Y'all are talking so fast. So yes, always. Yes, yes, yes. Cause that's how we do always reach back you know there's there's strength in numbers so i am loving this this is like a course of yeses and don't for don't worry one day for those of you who can't say yes yet you will have that opportunity because we're all about building leaders here tonight so thank you guys so much for participating in the chat and we're going to keep it that chat action has to keep coming because tonight we are going to discuss all about encouraging career growth and of course climbing that corporate ladder ladder so let me walk you through our agenda for tonight because it is pretty packed and so of course we're talking and then we have this uh, awesome keynote presentation by Elfrida and then my leadership panel and guess who is moderating the panel tonight that's right your girl I'm doing that and of course we started with the tunes in the beginning there's still time to network in the end so you can network to some tunes but network all throughout this is what's happening and um of course guys 
when we say network also get social with us we are bbtn and that's our handles and of course you see our hashtag bbtn get with us everywhere follow us tweet us tag us hashtag bbtn because you know what we want to make sure we keep the opportunities and the knowledge flowing as well the future 2021 that's where you want to be because we have already officially launched it a couple of weeks back and it is the one, number one tech summit that you do not want to miss it's the largest gathering of black tech professionals globally and this year it will take place october 28th and 29th. and if you are a black professional in tech it is free 99 baby so make sure you go to bptn.com right away and sign up and when you do that don't be selfish this is something your friends want to go to, even if they don't know about it. Trust me, they want to go. So make sure you let them know so you can sign up too. And like I said, it can be on you because it's free 99. Okay, so now I want to know who is joining us for the very first time because let me know in the chat. You can let us know with one, if this is your first timer, right? That's okay, let me know. One in the chat, and I love how you guys are all sharing your LinkedIn profiles, so keep doing that. If you are here for the first time, share one. And if you're one of my OGs, you know what to do, type OG in the chat. Because in the meantime, for all you newbies, all you number ones, you see? You all are real ones. <laughs> this is how this works. Did you know that you, um, you make sure you stay engaged in the, in the BPTN chat, but there's also right beside that a little tab for questions. So throughout tonight, we may have time to, to grab your questions. And if we can, we'll grab them from there as opposed to the chat because you can see how it flies. Look at all my OGs. You guys are repping. I love it. And of course, these master classes are recorded. So if we're just dropping nuggets tonight, you can go back and listen to the replay or you can share it with a friend too. And of course, you can customize your screen. So I've got my windows all, you know, big and small, depending on how I need it for my setup tonight so I can talk to you. But you can do that too. And don't worry, you can't break the internet, especially here at BPTN. So what you can do, if you don't like what you see, you can just hit that circular arrow and it will resize everything back to the to the way it once was at default settings. And of course, be, uh, below, you see all those little buttons with icons. Click around in there, you'll find speaker bios, slides that we're using today, member LinkedIn profiles, and so much more. So we give you the goods. And of course, you know how you're sharing those LinkedIn profiles? You've got people to share it with. So we have Adija, James, and Sarah. They're all from RBC. And those are people, their names, their full names are on the front right here, right now. And those are the people you want to get connected with. So make sure you do that. Engage with them because this is all about bringing you opportunities. Okay? So now like i said you guys know i'm nosy so i have a quick question it's a multiple choice question and i want to know what you think so let's have some fun and there is no wrong, wrong answer here i just want to know what you think um what do you think is most important to climb the corporate ladder is it having a mentor or a sponsor is it self-advocacy to take the leap hey, aka personal branding all that good stuff the right opportunity within your organization or all of the above Oh, I see the winner is clear, but keep going, guys. Keep voting because, you know, I, you know, I believe self-advocacy, personal branding is so important, but that's just me. But it's only getting six percent right now. But all of the above, we need that. But I'm not trying to, to, to sway you guys. Let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, the votes are coming in hot, coming in hot. <laughs> and let's see. So we're already yeah, 72 percent. 53 of you guys that keep it coming. There are so many people on tonight, so keep voting. And so we got 73% say all of the above. So that is all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> so that's what we're looking at tonight. I believe it is an entire toolkit to make sure that you create the opportunities for yourself. So now, it's all about equipping you with the things that you need to know. So I am excited to bring to our stage, the keynote speaker. Hello, Elfrida, how are you? I'm great, thanks. How are you, Cher? You've been turning Fantastic. it up for us already. 
that's the plan that is definitely the plan so now my plan is to let everybody know a little bit about you before i turn it over to you so for you guys who have not met elfrida yet it she is the senior director of card operations at rbc she's responsible for leadership development refinement transformation and successful execution of cards and payments operations strategies and performance so she got a big list of things that she's responsible for and now she's responsible for educating y'all so i will leave you to it and we'll see you on the other side thanks so much Cher. well i think i can confidently say that i have never been in a room virtual or otherwise with so many black professionals and it is amazing i feel so fortunate to have been asked to speak with you today and tell you a little bit of my story and share some of the things i've learned along the way in my career journey i think that my career and even chunks of my life outside of work could be placed in the category of never say never my career history and journey is not traditional and if i could go back in time and speak to a younger version of myself i don't think the younger elfrida would believe what was in store for the future i was born in canada in a town north of toronto and my parents immigrated to Canada from England um, in the early 1960s, and they were from Guyana. And the reason that they left England was because they couldn't find a place to live. My dad was a medical professional. He made a very good income and uh, wanted to rent a house for my mom and my brother, who was a baby at the time, for them to live. And um, he would call the landlords on the phone and they would say, yes, we've got vacancies. And then when he would arrive in person, as soon as they saw him, they would say, sorry, we don't have any vacancies or sorry, the place has already been rented. And um, after that happened several times, um, he just gave up and they ended up living in a place that was well below their means and it wasn't a great place to live at all. And uh, so he got frustrated and decided to pack up the family and move to Canada. And um, in Canada, uh, several years later, um, I was born and my dad had a wanderlust. So um, we moved around to a lot of different places in Canada. So I know there's some people here from out west. I heard Edmonton, Vancouver. We lived in Western Canada. We lived in Northern Manitoba, where it was really, really cold in the winter. Um, and we, usually we were either the only black family in the community, or we were maybe the first black family that ever became a part of the community. So um, while growing up, our parents really stressed to us that because we were black, we'd be held to a different standard uh, and needed to be the best in whatever we chose to do. Education was a key area of focus for our parents and it was basically a given that we would be going to university. And, you know, my dad faced a lot of discrimination and so he really, um, kind of drove it home to us that um, things wouldn't be fair and we would have to work harder. Although, but they did support us in anything we wanted to do, but we were expected to work really hard at it and to strive to be the best in whatever it was we chose to do. And um, growing up, I love music, um, always have. And um, I decided that I wanted to become an opera singer so I uh, went to the University of Toronto and went to music school and uh, pursued a bachelor, bachelor's degree of music. And uh, while I was going to university, I worked at RBC part-time as a bank teller. And I did this for my whole four years of my degree. And then after graduation, I did both. So I worked at the bank and I also pursued uh, my music career. And then after a few years, I uh, decided to pivot. I didn't want to be a starving artist anymore. 
So I decided to switch and um, pivoted to a banking career and then uh, did various roles in the branch, then moved into our technology division to implement branch technology on both the hardware and software side. And then within the technology division, I moved into project management, got my PMP designation, realized that I didn't really enjoy project management, and uh, then moved into another role within our corporate real estate division, um, focusing on workplace innovation and reinventing um, office spaces and office technologies. And um, around that time, I um, wanted to, I realized my dream was really going into senior leadership and um, decided to go back to school while I was working to get my MBA so that I could be considered for senior leadership roles. Uh, then uh, from the corporate real estate role, I moved back into the technology um, division into um, our innovation team. And I um, headed up the innovation team, which provided research and development of different ideas and solutions for groups across the bank in the areas of artificial intelligence, biometrics, cybersecurity, and different areas of fintech. Then I moved back over to the business side a few years later um, to lead our contact centers, transformation and technology enablement teams and labs, uh, where we implemented an award-winning artificial intelligence solution for RBC's telephone banking services. And then recently I've moved yet again into our uh, global credit cards and payments operations, uh, where I lead a large global team that supports our credit card and payments business, uh, which becomes more fascinating by the day as new digital capabilities um, are built so that we can respond to traditional and non-traditional competitors like Apple and PayPal. So when I look back on my career and how I've navigated my journey, I say that my approach can be broken up into three key areas um, that I call the three Ds. And the three Ds break down into developing your dream, developing yourself, and developing your network. I'm a dreamer but I'm also a planner and every so often about once or twice a year, I carve out a block of time to sit down and spend time with myself. And spending time with yourself means taking the time to reflect and think about what you want to be, what you want, and then creating some plans to make it happen knowing that there needs to be flexibility in the plans because often things can blow up because life is never, never turns out exactly as we've planned. And then you also want to self-declare, which is speaking to close allies and people who you trust about your dreams and plans. So when I was in a really junior position at RBC, um, I was developing my dream of being in a senior leadership position. And I remember telling one of my managers that that was an aspiration of mine. And I remember them saying back to me, that like they were shocked and they said, I've never heard anybody say that. And my perspective was, why not me? And then I had another manager who just came to me and said, what are you interested in? Like, what would you like to do in the future? And when I told her my dream, she said, okay, so here's what you need to do. Here's the path I'd recommend you take. And she supported me. So it's important to self-declare and say what you're interested in so that people can come alongside and support and help you. And then there's developing yourself. And developing yourself includes asking questions, 
and doing research on what it takes and what skills, education, exposure, or connections you'll need to succeed. And of course, always striving to be the most knowledgeable and have the strongest skill set. Do as much as you can to remove any question marks that a decision maker or influencer may have about your ability. Then there's developing your network. And developing your network, which is what we're doing tonight, it's very important. Um, but I know for most of us, and definitely for me, it's something I'm not comfortable doing. But I was fortunate to have a manager who made it crystal clear why it was important. You need to have people in your corner, people who have your back when you make a mistake, people who can give you constructive feedback, people who will speak up for you in a room when you may not have 100% support. We are living in a world of bias. And while it's getting better, you need to have people who can help and support you on your journey. It's also wise to have a diverse network. I really feel it's important to diversify your network and don't just seek out people, only people who are in technology or only engineers because you're an engineer and you want to work in that field. It's great to have a few people in your network who are similar to you. You can have a few of them. Um, but the more exposure you have to different perspectives, backgrounds, industries and approaches, the better. In the Western world in recent years, there's been a shift to identity politics, hives, tribes, and gravitating only to things and people that we're comfortable with. And social media has become a bit of an abler of this shift. And this may be a contrarian viewpoint that I'm sharing, but I'm saying this based on my own experience there is value moving outside of your comfort zone and looking for areas where you can be a pioneer and not necessarily surrounded by people who look like you and think like you. We talk about the importance of being able to see of people, being able to see themselves represented in their community and the companies that they work in, and that is absolutely true, and we have to keep working toward that. But don't let the fact that there's no one of your color or gender in an area or industry you're interested in stop you from pursuing opportunities. Don't be afraid to say to yourself, why not me? We're finally at a place in time where people are looking for black leaders and black leaders of the future in many industries. But my concern is that this window of opportunity may close. And it may close because an excuse is given that the talent wasn't out there or there wasn't an interest or support in the black community. And that may not even be a true statement but we don't want to give people an excuse. So dare to be the first and dare to be the only temporarily and then make it your mission to bring others along with you through your influence, support, mentorship and sponsorship. I'm not saying that this approach is easy it is not and it's not always comfortable being the only one and it's really easy being the first but there are unique opportunities out there for those who dare to be the first and this is why it's important to keep your network diversified you could be a technologist you could provide tremendous value and thrive in a company that's not a technology company by bringing a new skill set and a new way of thinking that the company needs. 
So don't be shy about exploring areas that you may not have thought of. And that's another reason why to keep your network diverse. You can, you may find out there's other areas where you could be of value and where your expertise can help you to move up and move along your career path. So I would say, don't be afraid to be a pioneer or gravitate toward areas outside of your comfort goal, comfort zone. You can reach your career path through a variety of different ways. And that's why I say never say never. Now, if you are doing this, if you are charting your own path and it gets hard or you feel it's a struggle, don't suffer in silence. Reach out to your network for help and support. So in closing, I'd like to leave you with three gems or three takeaways. Develop your dreams, develop yourself, develop your network, knowing that all three can change, grow, and evolve. And don't be afraid to say, why not me? Thank you. Oh my gosh, you slayed it tonight, okay? You threw some Ds on that talk. So thank you so much. You developing your dream, developing yourself and developing your network, which allows you to dare to be the one and the only. So thank you so much, Elfrida. You rocked it tonight. I know people were taking notes all night long. Thank you, Cher. Thanks so much for having me. You're so welcome. All right, so guys, I know you drop some D's on your notepads or drop some D's in your phone as you were taking notes because that was so fire and is exactly what we need to hear as we dare to be the first and the only, but not for long, right? Because we're all about reaching back to, to what's next and, and, and bringing us along and having that conversation. So tonight we are going to get ready to have that conversation about how you can move forward so you get the opportunity to reach back. So I know you're looking forward to our amazing panel panelist tonight because we're going to have a power pack panel here tonight trust me already talked to them and they have a gems to be dropped about how they are climbing and have climbed the corporate ladder so let me introduce you to our outstanding panelists so first up i have nicole Steele. nicole welcome hey how are you doing i am fantastic are you not excited after alfreda's chat oh, oh my gosh yeah definitely like alfreda killed it thank you she very much for all it. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so let me let everybody know about you. So Nicole is the Director of Integrated Communications for BTP Data to Value Marketing at SAP. She is a marketing professional with a successful track record for building innovative marketing programs and collaborating with global teams to generate demand and drive pipelines. So welcome, Nicole. We're going to see you in just a second. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, up next, I'm going to be welcoming Tia. Tia, hello, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you, how are you? Fantastic, energized after that talk, so I know you are too, I can already see your energy. Oh yes, I'm feeding off your energy. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, so let me let everybody know about you. You are the VP of culture, people and culture at Get Around, and you are an innovative and accomplished human resources professional with an extensive background in strategic business partnering, performance management, employee relations, compensation and benefits, HR policy and development. So you know all things people. So welcome, Tia. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. So next up, I've got Reggie. Reggie Maribel, how are you? What's up? What's up? How you doing? I am just basking in this black excellence. So this is awesome. And it's great to have you on the panel. So let me let everybody yeah, I'm, know. I'm honored, I'm honored to be here. I, I would encourage everybody to go out and look at the panelists. Don't look at mine because look at the panelists' background. These are some incredibly powerful people that we're going to talk to tonight. I'm just honored right? to be here. 
Well, we're great. Oh, we're glad to have you because you you are bringing it. So let me let everybody know a little bit about you. You are the area VP of enterprise corporate sales at Salesforce. You are you have the nationwide responsibility for an enterprise sales organization, and you are tasked with generating growth. But we don't stop there because you are also a published author and your book is called The Blueprint, The Keys to Making Big Money in Professional Sales. So well done, my friend. And thank you for joining us. Pleasure. All right. So next up, my final panelist for the evening is Chinedu Onyebola. How are you? Hello, Shay. How are you doing? That was awesome. You got that perfectly. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you know, I did practice. I that's right, right. <laughs> of course i did okay right. i'm a professional right but anyways let me let everybody know about you because you are a senior agile coach within the agile center of excellence at rbc and in your current role you collaborate with several lines of business inside rbc to ignite and sustain new ways of working with an outcome driven focus to deliver the right products at the right time and to of course delight customers so welcome to native right thank you all Pleasure right to be here wonderful okay so now it's time to bring all of my panelists together because we are going to have an incredible discussion and i want to remind everybody tuning in that you can submit your questions for the panelists but in the q a box continue to chat and connect with each other and comment on what's going on in the chat box but right beside there is a little tab to submit your questions so if we have time depends on how much this this conversation is going i don't know this gonna be a hot one but if you have a burning question let us know and i'll be checking it tonight night and um first things first you know because i like to have fun clearly and um the first thing that i want to ask you <laughs> it's like shocking i know but the first thing <laughs> sorry so here's the it's all good it, it, this is this is how it's gonna go this is the kind of energy i bring to the table so here's my question for you if there was a board came to describe your career go growth, which one would it be? And I know this is no easy question, so I thought I'd jump in with my answer first because I'm kind of hosting, so I'll do what I want to do. But <laughs> mine is Connect Four because it's all about connecting the dots in your career, making things happen. I know you like that. I just said it because I didn't want anybody else to get it. So, anyway. <laughs> so Nicole, let me start with you. What was what, what what's yours? You know what? I think I'm going to have to say snakes and ladders. And okay. I know that sounds kind of crazy and kooky for you guys, but um, I've had some great times and I've had some low times. So mm. it's like, get up on that high, get on the top there, and then boom, I got that snake. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's that's me. That's my game. Okay, Chinedo, what about you? Um, I would say Monopoly, probably. Um, mm. And the reason is I consider myself to be a late bloomer because I kind of started my professional career a bit late at 30. Um, I spent, I invested a lot of time and money in education and stuff. So it kind of, it kind of seemed, you know, kind of long winded, uh, but when it kicked off, it kind of had a nice trajectory to it. So it reminds me of Monopoly. You start slow, it can seem long, you need patience, but you make investment and trade off decisions. It comes with a bit of luck, but you know, you're still within your control. And balance, right? It's all about balance, you know. You it's know, all about balance. It's all about balance. So balance is a big, big thing. But at the same time, I keep building and investing, making mm -hmm. the right decisions. But you know that you can lose what you built, right, with the wrong decision. So being able and kill to make sure that you're making the right decisions. So I'll say that, oh. yeah, monopoly. <laughs> Very good answer. I feel like Family Feud. Good answer. Good answer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Reggie, what about you? What's your what's your game of choice? Yeah, first of all, um, shout out to Chinedu with the I love the hair, I love the haircut. Um, I love the y'all uh, have the same barber. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so mine would be chess, and the reason I say that I come from a family of high achievers. So my brother went to MIT, got a perfect um, math score on the SAT. My little sister was reading encyclopedias when she was in the second grade. She went to UVA. She's a lawyer. I didn't get any of that. I got a pretty smile, work ethic, and, and I got emotional <laughs> intelligence. And chess teaches you to think in dimensions, think in moves ahead. So I'm in sales. So I have to like really double down on empathy, listening and thinking ahead. Like what I say has a reaction to how someone's going to perceive what I say. So I'm always thinking in dimensions and thinking a couple of moves ahead. 
And that's just based mm-hmm. on the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm always thinking chess. I'm always thinking three moves ahead. Yes. Right here. And are we going to get those moves in your book? So if we go buy your book, are we going to get those moves? That's what I want to Yeah, they're in, there. they're in there. So, okay. and also, if you're wondering, I, I did steal the, um, the, the blueprint from Jay. His is blueprint, all one word, and mine is blueprint, two two words. So okay, so 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 you won't get sued. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it because you know they they they've got a full him and him and B have a full floor of lawyers just for things like that. So smart move, <laughs> Tia. Tell me about you. What it, what is your game of choice when it comes to describing your career? Sure, I'd have to say it would be apples to apples where you have um, multiple, there's several different options and whichever option you choose, you can make it work. Um, So my my background is in analytics and operations and I tend to make things work even if they don't necessarily fit together. Okay, so we're gonna stay on that theme of making things work. So I'm gonna stick with you, Tia. What is one strategy that you did to move up the corporate ladder? How did you make it work? Was there a specific challenge that you may have faced that you clearly remember and how did you overcome it? So that's like a whole bunch of questions in one, but let's just stick with that one strategy that you did to move up the corporate ladder and make it work. What did I, to, to make it work, I would say the one thing that I would always do is um, understand what the end goal was and determine what gaps I had to get to that end goal. So always starting with the end in mind. Um, and, you know, my end could be, you know, my next step for the next, my next role or, you know, where I want to be in the next 10 years, but making sure what my next move fit the steps in the path to get to that end goal. I like that. So you're kind of like Reggie, like seeing three moves ahead, like you're playing chess with your Mm -hmm. career. So that is pretty Mm -hmm. awesome. So Reggie, when you hear that question, what is the one strategy that you did to help you move up the corporate ladder? You you talked a little bit about, um, you know, your emotional intelligence and leveraging that, but how did you, how, like, what is the strategy that you used and did it include emotional intelligence? That's why I'm inquiring minds want to know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't. Can, so my, my story is rooted on success, colossal failure, and then reinvention. So quick, quick story. So I, I had most of my career has been in the telecom industry. And I went right. from a customer service agent to running Sprint's global sales organization, which is a really big job. And then I became a CRO, chief revenue officer of a, a mid-sized media company. I was the smartest guy in the room. I had all the answers. I had a big ass ego. And in that in that job, I got fired. This was five years ago. So I was fired. I was unemployed and I was a bartender for five months. So I learned a lot of, about myself, about life, about people, about humility and respect. So when I got into Salesforce, I came in at a pretty like a first line sales leader. And I've been promoted mm-hmm. like five times there. But I, I approached Salesforce with beginner's mind, respect, humility. I really focused on my listening skills. So if I if I wouldn't have failed, I, I would probably have eventually failed at something else because mm-hmm. I was the smartest guy in the room. I had a big ego and I needed to fail in order to reinvent myself. Oh, no pressure for the rest of you too. Cause I know everybody's like, wow, that was really good. But that <laughs> was fire. <laughs> no, that's exactly what we want because we want real stories because our experiences as black professionals navigating this space, we need to hear that we're not the only, we need to hear that we're not being gaslit and this is real stuff. So I appreciate that. And just even, you know, sharing that, that ego trip that you had to check yourself and check your ego at the door and come in with, um, you know, glass is empty, right? My cup is empty. So you had to come in like that, which I love. So Chinedu, what about you? What's the one strategy that you did um, to move up the corporate ladder? For me, I'll say it's just simply solving problems. You know, always looking for opportunities to identify a problem and, and help solve it. And this doesn't necessarily have to be from a manager perspective. Even when I have people reporting to me, I try to solve problems. Um, a story I have, you know, working with Deloitte a few years ago, I, I lived in Copenhagen, Copenhagen for a few months. And at the time, I was a senior consultant working on this large um, client and large project. And my manager at the time had to was assigned to a number of different projects and he'll have to travel back and forth different, obviously, North America, Copenhagen and stuff. And 
you know, just having a conversation, I was like, what, what keeps you up at night? What problem? What's, what are some of your pain points? And he mentioned that the traveling is killing me and stuff. I'm like, hey, why do you need to travel so much? What do you need to do? I can step in and help you do that so I don't, I don't have to travel. And that essentially helped me step into the manager role, even though I was a senior consultant, right? And by solving those problems, when the time came for promotion, he was one of my biggest advocates. So I, I kind of take that with me. But I'm like, where can I find a problem? How can I solve it? Um, I, th I think it has really helped me in my career because I'll tell you the last three jobs I've had, um, I've kind of moved, not necessarily within companies, but moving to other companies. And my last three jobs have been passive hires, right? It's someone reaching out to me and saying, hey, Chia, do how are you doing? Are you looking? Hey, we have this opportunity. And I was able to move to the next next level that way. So um, for me, that's it's I always look for a problem solving. And I like what Tia said about the goals, right? It's what goal are you trying to achieve? And then how can I solve that goal for you? I love that. That is so powerful. So like already, I hope you guys are just taking notes. This is one for the archives. This is one that you guys are going to go want to watch the replay when we're done. So Nicole, I want you to bring it home. What is that one strategy that you did to move up the corporate ladder? You know what, to be honest, I always wanted to be in marketing before marketing was a thing, really. I remember mm -hmm. when I told people I wanted to get into marketing, they're like, oh, you want to do sales? And I'm like, no, no, I, I, I want to do marketing. <laughs> um, and so I was working at this company. I had just finished my um, university degree. There was an opportunity for a marketing coordinator role. And I went to the hiring manager and I said, hey, um, can I apply for this role? And she said to me, mm, kind of looked me up and down, was kind of quiet a little bit. And I thought she was thinking, okay, well, what time should we set Nicole up for her interview? Or, you know, like maybe we should have her print her resume out on this type of paper, because that's how old I am, people. Like you used to have to print it out on paper. Um, and she said to me, which talked like the living crap out of me, she said, why don't you stick to what, your people are good at. And I just don't think marketing is something your people are really good at. She didn't ask me anything about my schooling or anything like that. And so it was at that point in time, so the very beginning of my career that I realized I can't just wait and expect people to say yes to me. I need to surround myself mm -hmm. with people that care to help lift me up. And mm -hmm. so that was making sure that I either find a sponsor would either find allies before you know everybody started using this ally term you know find friends that really cared about um helping me move up and then of course i would do the same um in return uh, in return Wow, I love the transparency of this panel already. So you guys know what kind of night that is, because that's powerful. And here's the thing is like, as much as we think we're the one, the, you know, the one or the first or the only, like this is happening and it still does happen. And, um, but I like how you were just basically bet and you went and you did it anyway and you crushed it and you are crushing it. So that is awesome and encouraging. So as black professionals, and I'll, let, I'll open the floor to you guys, as black professionals, what strategies do you use to self promote? Was it a mentor? Were you using LinkedIn? Like what was your thing as far as, you know, getting your name and your reputation out there? Um, I, I can start that. I can start. Quickly. Perfect. Um, so it, this kind of ties back to um, the, my previous response around solving problems, because kind of doing that, you're kind of self-promoting yourself in a way. Um, I, I was fortunate as well to come from an organization, my last role, where there was a formal mentoring process in place. You had coaches, you talked to coaches, and I actually had a personal coach that kind of helped me talk through a couple of things, strategies, what are my goals? How do I navigate certain situations in the workplace, um, situations that may not be as um, pleasant, right? So that really helped me, you know, really helped me shape my thinking. Um, so I was really fortunate to be a part of that organization. But a lot of my, um, aside from that, I haven't necessarily had formal coaches, but I rely a lot on my informal, um, on my network for informal coaching and informal mentoring. Um, again, I remember I talked about being a late bloomer. So I have a lot of my friends from school who are in executive um, positions right now, VPs, directors, C-level positions. So I speak to them a lot. Hey, what, what, what are you doing to get to where you are? 
you know what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis so i think i rely a lot on that and um, I think the last thing is really just um, building my building my connections, my network, mm. you know, building a personal, a personal level of connection with my network um, and using that to kind of get ideas, share thoughts. I do a lot of things with my with my network on a personal um, level. I play poker with a couple of my network from, you know, years back working at, a, at an organization. I'll play poker every Monday. And it's interesting that, you know, as part of that personal connection, it, you kind of delve into career-based uh, conversations. So I think that, that kind of helps. Uh, that's what and I then think. one thing that you've talked about before, and this is offline with when we, we had this discussion earlier, is that you focus a lot of your networking, in spite of COVID, in-person networking. That's sort of your thing. Is that right? Yep. As as much as possible. Hey, let's grab a drink when, when things were open. Let's connect the poker game. We're actually meeting for in-person poker because we did this virtually, but we're meeting in a few weeks for some in poker games. So it's really that in-person connection, um, connect over video, you know, but just keeping that connection. I'm making sure that there's that personal aspect to it for a mm -hmm. subset of my network, not everyone, for a subset of my network. Of course. And really keep it personal, right? And I love that. And Nicole, I'm going to go to you next because you are the exact opposite. So let's set us up with um, <laughs> what you do with your networking strategies and um, why you, you've chosen that path. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm in Vancouver. Uh, represent. Sorry, had to do it. Um, so it's West Coast, <laughs> West Coast, Canada. So there aren't many bigger tech companies out here. And so what I've had to do is I know I've known that I want to be in tech since like gosh, at least a decade and a half ago now. So I had to make sure that I made relationships with people in those tech hubs in the States. So, you know, um, I have a lot of people in my network in California, a lot of people in Philadelphia, a lot of people in New York, um, you know, like a lot of people all over the States where there are the different tech hubs and, you know, just chatting with them. If, it, if it's, you know, I worked with them at a company or they were a vendor that I worked at at a company and just keeping those relationships up and so that's either via linkedin or you know i'll send text messages to people just hey thinking of you you know what what are you up to hey i i know you just moved to florida what's going on with the with the unpacking or you know hey what's going on in california there's fires going on i hope you and your family are safe what are some things that i can do to help you so it's just because i don't have that ability you know to meet with people in a, on a personal um in-person opportunity. So how do I keep them remembering that Nicole is around, Nicole can help or, you know, vice versa. Okay, I like that. And Tia, let's jump to you for a second and tell me a little bit about your strategies. What do you do as far as like that self-promotion piece? Did you have a mentor? Were you networking? What was your stra strategy? Sure. I. I've struggled with self-promotion for just about my entire career. Um, mm -hmm. I have learned to do it um, out of necessity because if you don't speak up for what you want, no one's just gonna hand you anything in most cases. Um, I have been fortunate enough to have been promoted throughout my career, but there has been times where, you know, I, I see something that I want and I'm like, you know, I, I, I can do that job. Um, mm -hmm. but I may not get the role because, you know, either someone else, they have someone else in mind. Um, but I'm, there's also been instances where, um, I could have been promoted within my role. Um, so, you know, I, I'll go back to speaking up for myself. Um, I ha haven't really had an official mentor. Um, mm -hmm. I always advocate for mentors. I know the importance of mentoring. I mentor many people myself, um, but I haven't had an official mentor. Um, I do think that I could have gone, uh, been further along in my career uh, mm -hmm. earlier on if I had that structure or mentor in the past. Um, but I think that goes to my introversion which I, I didn't speak about, but I am an introvert, uh, but I have to, given my role and just, uh, you know, my 
career level, I have to be an extrovert. Um, so reaching out and uh, connect, making connections has been a struggle, but mm -hmm. I, I'm here because I know there's many others that are similar to me. And, uh, you know, it's always starting with the end in mind and not taking no for an answer. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you were so transparent with sharing the fact that, yo, this doesn't come easy, like per, um, putting yourself out there, promoting yourself, branding yourself is, is not natural for you. And that's OK. Yeah. I know that there are a lot of people who are just like you that saying, finally, thank God. I, it's like this pressure right now that you have to do it. But it's like, what if you're not good at it at first? Exactly. Um, and, and, and I love that you were transparent about that. So Reggie, someone who who was able to check your ego um, now, especially now in the lens that you have now, you, you see how it helped you at times and how it hindered you. But now as you come in with this like kind of Zen <laughs> approach to what you're doing, um, what sort of wisdom do you have to share around self promotion, especially being in sales and being being that that person who's not afraid to, to make a phone call. Um, what's that been like for you as far as your ability to self-promote and also is did mentorship play a, a key role in that? Yeah, so so I, I started off with the megaphone early in my career, like promoting myself. So now it's a delicate balance. Fortunately for me, I'm in sales and I'm, I'm gonna quote Jay-Z, men lie, women lie. <laughs> and so sales is based on performance and I learned that early in my career, which is why I was gravitated towards sales is because as a person of color, sales is very objective. Can you produce mm -hmm. or can you not? Produce? So being in sales, it's all about like numbers, it's about performance. So what I focus on are three things for promotion and, and career advancement. I focus on performance, I focus on relationships and I focus on brand. And when I say performance, I'm, I work for Salesforce, high performance sales culture. Either you perform or there's not like a lot of room for underperformers. So performance speaks for itself. Relationships, mm -hmm. when I talk about relationships, I'm talking about cultivating my own professional network, meaning I'm, I am investing my own personal time to take people out to lunch, to do virtual coffees with people, to check in on people and make sure that they're good. So I spend a lot of time on that. And then also within relationships, there's mentors and there's sponsors. I have my own board of directors. I have my own mentors that I go to. They work at Salesforce, some work outside of Salesforce. And that's like my confidants, people I can go to to get mm -hmm. a candid advice and coaching. My wife and my kids are also mentors. And then sponsors, nice. sponsors are people that work for your company that are in senior roles that can help you get exposure, help you get um, promotions. So you gotta have mentors and sponsors and you gotta have a network. So that's your relationships. The last thing is your brand. When I talk about brand, what are people saying about you when you're not in the room and how you really build your brand? It's what are you doing outside of your job to make the company you work for better and to make the world a better place? So fortunately, I work for a company like Salesforce that really prides itself on making the world a better place. So every employee at Salesforce gets a week of paid time off to do community service work. I'm the executive sponsor of this organization called Bold Force. Its charter is to help the company find, develop, mentor, and promote black talent. We also do community service work, and we are focused on exposing kids from disadvantaged backgrounds to technology. So if you're doing all of those things, you got performance, you got relationships, you got brand, that's how you get promoted, and that's how you do it subtly. You don't have to put a megaphone and, and, and yell, hey, mm -hmm. I'm Reggie Marable. I love it. That was the trifecta right there. And funny enough, I love your affinity for Jay-Z. My first branding <laughs> talk back in 2013 was 99 Problems, but my brand ain't one. And I used Jay-Z <laughs> lyrics to talk about personal brand. And this is 2013, okay? This is 2021. I love it. Not my <laughs> first rodeo. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> So here's the thing is like we, we, we're ending on a high note as far as talking about branding, but sometimes, and this is a serious question, and sometimes on the flip side, 
Black leaders have been, commonly shared the experience of dealing with the others who have, are threatened by their abilities and their success. And in that moment, Black leaders have admitted to the fact that they are dulling their shine because they don't want to make that person feel uncomfortable or they feel like they can't stand out as much as they could because they're getting negative attention for the positive contribution, which seems backwards, but it's the truth. So what advice do you have when it comes to dealing with people who are and navigating those microaggressions and those challenges that come to your authority and accomplishments while still owning what makes you awesome and not keeping your successes to yourself. So I know it's a big jumbly question, but it is a big jumbly problem that we're all dealing with. So if someone, what do you do when someone is trying to make you dull your shine? I'll give it, I'll give it a first shot. Like I struggle okay. with this because because I went I went to Morehouse College. So Morehouse, in my humble opinion, is the greatest school in the world for Black mm -hmm. men to go to. But it teaches you not only I mean I already had confidence, but it teaches you like mm -hmm. st strong confidence and always to be the best and be elite. So I struggle with that. What I try to do is I try to work. I try to outwork like everyone. I'm like I, I pride mm -hmm. myself on work. At, I pride myself on adding value. So if I'm adding value and I'm working hard, I don't really have to like downplay like my shine or, or my swag. I don't have to do that, especially mm -hmm. being in sales. Most company owners and senior executives in big companies, all they care about is, can you help me solve a problem? And can you help me help me make more money? So I'm a little different because I'm in sales, but I struggle with that at all times. And I just try like not to focus on self-promotion but to keep my swag up, I just focus on those three things that I talk about. I also mm -hmm. focus on value, adding value and just outworking everybody. I love that. I love that. So Tia, I'm going to come to you next. Mm -hmm. What do you do what, or what advice do you have when it comes to navigating those microaggressions or challenges to your authority and accomplishments while still owning your awesome? Absolutely. I, I would say the authenticity is key. Um, always maintaining my authentic self, not wavering based on who I'm talking to or what the situation is. Um, I've been in uh, several heated discussions and arguments, but maintaining my composure. And, you know, I'll have other people reach out to me later, like, how did you maintain your sanity throughout that? And it's just, it's a poker face, I guess. Um, but, you know, Knowing my worth and my the product that I put out there, my brand, my work speaks for itself. Um, my work will always speak for itself. I, I have extremely um, high work ethic. I build teams that have high high work ethic, and we are producers, and that's what I will always be known for. So, regardless of what may come my way, I let it roll off like Teflon and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Dust those shoulders off. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. <laughs> All right. Who wants to add in next? Because either one of you can go. I can add a few thoughts. Um, and this is how I approach approach it, right? Um, it's, it's pretty much maintaining a positive mindset and keep your star shining if I want to give anyone advice. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do that is because, you know, I can't really control how people or others act towards me, but I, I'm 100% in control of my emotions and my actions. Um, so don't let anyone rob you of that. That's the first thing. In, I'm a pretty even keel person, so I don't get wowed up with stuff. Um, but I personally choose to put aside microaggressions and challenges. But I said mm -hmm. put aside, I don't, I don't ignore it because there are times that you need to confront things and address um, certain things. So in some situations that I've been in that um, situation, I've addressed it. And it's always a one on one conversation. I think it's only once where I've blown up when I, I was in a meeting with a client and he was saying the totally wrong thing and I blew up and my team was actually scared because they're like, we've never seen you blow up before, fortunately. Um, but I, I felt it was necessary at that point um, to do that. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side, I am always honest with myself. You know, I've learned to always also admit when I'm wrong. You know, when something happens and I'm wrong, I've learned to admit that and apologize and have a conversation with the person. And I think this has built mutual respect with a couple of colleagues that I've worked with in the past. So it's not always about hate, aggressions towards me. Sometimes I may be the aggressor as well. 
So I recognize that and I try to also make sure that I fix that. Awesome. I love that. And here's here's a comment that caught my attention when you guys were talking. Ricardo says, I started wearing glasses because I read that it makes other groups feel less intimidated. And he says it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so I love that. <laughs> so Nicole, what about you? What, what are you? What's the strategy or how have you dealt with that? Because clearly, you know, the, you're, this is not your first rodeo when it comes to someone saying, hey, stay in your own lane, even though you have awesome to bring to the table. So what what do you suggest or have to share? So um, I'm at SAP right now. And so they're a large global company. They have over 100,000 employees. They've been around forever. And SAP is a dinosaur. And mm. I always wanted to work again at SAP because I thought it was the mothership and everything was figured out with marketing and it was going to be amazing. And I am in marketing because I find that at least marketing, you can tie your activities to the bottom line. I'm not in sales because I can't close the deal, Reggie. Like if I could close the deal, I would be in sales, but I can't do that. So I'm just going to build pipeline for your guys and show your guys, look at all this pipeline I built for you so you can close those deals. And that's great. And so what I found when I came back to SAP this last time is that they're still a dinosaur. And so there's a lot of great and new innovative ways to do marketing, like lead scoring or identifying a sphere of influence so that you can reach the proper target audience and reach the ultimate decision makers so that you can market to them to hand that off to sales. And a lot of the people who had been within the organization for a long time, they didn't like what I was doing because we've never done it like that. Nicole, you need to slow your roll. I don't like this. You're scaring us. We don't know how to do this. And mm. old Nicole, I would have stopped and just been like, okay, I'm going to comply. But I knew that I was doing the right thing. And so I was like, you know what? You guys, you guys go and do you. I'm going to have me and my team that I manage. We're going to do it the right way. And by the end of the quarter, I'm showing that I have more pipeline, I have more conversion to sale. And so then people started looking. And so just like Reggie said, like, I, I don't have to show and prove anything to you. But at the end of the day, you're going to see what my results are. And that's going to do the talking for me. And so it's just having to do that stuff and having the ability to ignore what all the naysayers are and just stick to your truth, especially if you know what's going on and just get her done. I love it. And I think the themes still continue to come out, these driving themes around, you know, building your network, having the, that that team that um, whether it's your own personal board, your sponsors, your mentors, everything like that, self-promotion. But ultimately, it's like you can have all that. But if you don't have that that drive to, to perform, that drive to outperform, you won't get as far as you want to go. And every single one of you have been sharing that so far. So I'm loving this story. But here's the thing. Even while diversity is changing in organizations, many black employees remain stuck in the middle with fewer growth opportunities or senior executive pathways. With um, What is your advice for any audience member that is feeling stuck in their career right now? And who would like that first? I guess I, I, I'll, I'll give a shot. Um, I, I would say the first thing you need to do, I'm just going to keep it real. It's time to do some self-inspection. Like mm. look yourself in the mirror. And can you look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm giving this my all. I'm giving this 150%. I'm mastering my craft. I'm at the top of my game. And if you can't answer yes to those questions, then you need to like look yourself in the mirror. I'm going to uh, quote the Arnold Schwarzenegger. He says, you can have results or excuses. You can't have both. So the first thing mm. you need to do is do the self reflection So if, if you can say, yeah, I'm giving this my all. I'm on the top of my game and it's still not happening. Next thing you need to do, let, let's focus on, let, let's, uh, let's take a look at your relationships. Are you networking? Do you have mentors and sponsors at your company? Do you have people that are going to like vouch for you when you're not in the room? So if the answer is no, then let's 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 focus on that. Let's get that up. And then finally, if if you're doing and you got the performance, you got relationships, you, the self inspection is is there, and it's still not happening. Hey, I'm just being real. It's time to bounce. It's time to go somewhere else. It's time, like LeBron James said, yep. it's time to skip my town. Yep. To <laughs> Guys are like anyone that's investing time to join this call and talk to these amazing people 
that means that you're invested in your career. There's other mm -hmm. places you can work and be successful at. That, that's my advice. Mm -hmm. That is golden advice. And of course, while you guys are there, make sure you're networking in the comments. Make sure you are connecting with each other. It's all about expanding your network. I love that introversion, like first look in before you look up at what's next, yeah. right? And I love that. So who else would like to join in on uh, on those comments right now? So I can add some stuff to the com comment. I, I think I, I look mm -hmm. at it from two perspectives. The first perspective is really, it's tied to how organizational structures are just set up, right? Um, and we all know this in the last few years, it's, it's, you know, getting better, especially in the last two years with the whole BIPOC, um, thing, but, uh, you know, Elfrida said something, she said this, uh, this window of opportunity may be really small. And I totally agree with her. And I think this is the time that we all have an opportunity, you know, to really advise and bring awareness to our individual organizations, our colleagues, right. To take as much of that opportunity that, that we have. So that's one. The second thing is has to do with what you have in within your control so i think the the first thing is know who you are and know your what and what you bring to the table i absolutely love what reggie said i think i shared my story with you guys where at a, at a company i worked worked at i i was up for promotion to a senior senior management level and i overachieved on all of the objective parameters but still didn't get it you know and I decided to leave the, the organization, not because I didn't get a promotion, but because I didn't get clear feedback on why I didn't get promoted. So I, I felt like it was a moving target. And I, I kind of looked at myself and said, I know my word, I know what I bring to the table. So I'm going to bounce in Reg's, <laughs> Reg's words. Um, mm -hmm. Then I think, you know, make learning a continuous and lifelong journey, like evolve yourself, always look for new skills and capabilities. Last year, I took a course in graphic design. My job has nothing to do with graphic design, but that has helped me a lot in just the way I prepare presentations and layout presentations. I just started taking a course in artificial intelligence. My job has nothing to do with artificial intelligence, but you know, technology growing. I want to make sure that I stay relevant and I know what's going on in the industry and you know, really staying in tune with the times. And then look for opportunities to operate at the next level. Um, even if you don't have the title, look for that opportunity. If you can step in and perform well in that role, people will notice, believe me, people will notice. And then mm -hmm. again, Reggie spot on the, you know, I think truthfully evaluate yourself. I, I, another story I have, I have a lot of, I'm Nigerian. I have a lot of friends from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who moved here? A lot of them, uh, you know, I've, I've been in companies where I've worked at and they, they come to me to mentor them and they say, and they, and they tell me, Hey, in Nigeria, I had the senior executive position and right now, you know, I'm in this position and, and they get frustrated, but I advise them. It's a different culture. It's a different work culture, different environment. Look at it from the perspective of being truthful to ask if you're ready for that role, mm. you know, given the culture and the context and be truthful about it, right? Because different cultures and I, I could tell they weren't ready for the role and I advised them and told them how they, how they're not ready and why they're not ready and what to do to get ready for the role so i think a lot of times um we are not as truthful to ourselves we just feel we need the title or we need the pay um you know but being truthful to yourself continuous learning and just know what you bring to the table is what i, I would mm. say Mm, mm, mm. This is some good stuff right here. So, Nicole, what about you? What, what advice do you have for any members in the audience who are currently feeling stuck in their careers right now? So far, you know, we've lined up some amazing advice. Do you have anything to add to that? And it's OK if you're just like, I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I definitely am with them. Um, something that I've had to do um, in the past and Tia, I think you, you have a very similar um, experiences. Um, I was working at a really great analytics company, loved it, loved my boss, but I wasn't moving up. And so what I did was I spoke to him and I said, I, I, I want the next level. And so he went and he found for me this chart that HR makes up of these are all the tasks that the next level does. And so I went through and I, I'm in marketing. So, you know, I put together a PowerPoint, made it look all pretty, identified these are the tasks that um, should be for this level. These are the tasks that I'm actually doing. And then these are the tasks that I'm doing that is actually in the very next level. So I went and I had a presentation with him and uh, 
you know, I was able to, I was able to get that um, promotion. And usually what happened was that they only did promotions like once a year, but I was able, because of all the pushing, like I, I can be a little bit assertive. Um, so with all the pushing that I did, they did make an exception for me to, to get that. But, you know, I kind of felt at the time and maybe this was me, you know, being woe is me, but I felt that I was seeing a lot of people getting promoted that didn't have to go through an exercise like that. And yet I had to. Um, and so I was kind of upset while I was doing it in the beginning, but I thought, you know what, who cares about their journey or how they got to their place? For me at this place in time, this is what my journey looks like. And if I want this, this is what I'm going to do. If I don't want it, I can stay here. I can complain to everybody and their dog that I want this, but I don't have it. But I know what I need to do. And so I did that so that I could get to that next level. I like that. Um, that is exactly what you need to do. And um, Tia, I'll, I'll, I'll close out with you on this question. So what are your thoughts? Yes, uh, Nicole, you're right. I do have a very similar situation, but it didn't turn out as nicely as yours did. Um, it, it was a bit in the reverse. I went to my boss with that chart. Um, I'm working in HR, so I know what the chart looks like that you're referring to. And I saw the next level that I was functioning at, and I highlighted those areas of um, that, you know, the tasks um, where I owned and, you know, just ex giving examples of, um, you know, showing examples of where I'm accomplishing these tasks and where I'm excelling at accomplishing these tasks. And I wanted an explanation from my boss as to why I haven't been promoted to the next level. Um, he was not able to provide me with that. And he, it, well, though he said he would, um, weeks went on, months went on. Um, so I went to HR and they sent me back my HR, HR for HR. It's a thing. Uh, <laughs> 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 they sent me back to my boss. Um, and it was, you know, promises here, promises there. It ultimately didn't happen. So I found the, the right position outside of the organization. Um, I love the organization. I was highly engaged with the organization. I um, led many initiatives within the organization, but I also needed to take care of myself and nobody mm. else was going to do it but me. Mm. Mm -mm. I love that, that bounce factor right there. Seems like everyone here is not afraid to bounce when the, when the, when it's not right for them anymore. And I think that is a key takeaway. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's removing that safety net from underneath you, but at the same time, you've got to be willing to bounce. And as we're wrapping up our evening, you guys have given, like you dropped gem after gem, bomb after bomb. So I wanna remind our audience that you guys can get the replays online. So if someone in your network needs to hear this incredible advice tonight, needs to hear Alfreda's talk from earlier today, this is what you want to do. So I want to remind you that's there, but I want to close out with a bang. So I would like each one of you to give us one takeaway from our audience tonight. What's the one thing if like, listen, I paid my free 99. I want this one <laughs> thing. So, <laughs> so give me that. And um, Tia, I'll start with you and then we'll work my way down the list. Okay. Uh, the one thing for me would be to really in internalize, understand who you are and where you want to go um, so that you can make your own path. Don't let anyone else tell you where to go or what direction to take. Ultimately, you know your own goal and you have to be your own best cheerleader. Love it, love it, love it. Chinedo, you are up next. What do you have yeah, for to me, say? What's the one takeaway? Yeah, for me, I think I kind of hinted on it before. It's really being in a constant state of learning. Mm -hmm. Keep learning, broaden your horizons, and evolve yourself continuously. And learning outside of your field as well. Just learning about what's happening in other industries. You know, that's something mm -hmm. that I, I like to do. Um, stay focused on your goals and as you succeed, help others succeed as well. Yes. I love it. I love it. So Nicole, you, you came with the practical amen there. So now what's your, <laughs> what's your amen takeaway? Definitely don't stop. Don't let 
any one person stop you from achieving your goals, your dreams. And like Trinity said, expand your network, you know, speak with other people, um, converse, uh, network with other people, and don't forget the other people that are behind you. Because you never know. You never know that somebody that you're talking to is a college student or something like that may have a connection with someone else that could help you uh, for a vendor, um, for an oppor a job opportunity, or just have really great uh, networking potential. So make sure that as you go up that ladder, ladder, you bring other people along. Because if we don't continue to do that for all of us, we're going to still stay here. And I'm trying this, I wanna make sure that we are all moving up because when my five-year-old and my eight-year-old are moving up, I want them to see a different world. And it's our responsibility to make sure that we help every, all of us move up that ladder. Wow, I love it. That is so hardcore. Now it's coming in hot to the closer of the night with, <laughs> tell me, Reggie, what do you got for us? <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with a quote, and this is a quote that I look at every single day. In life, there are two things that you have total control over, your attitude and your effort. So never let anyone take away your energy and always work harder than anyone out there. And, and, and if you ever get down, this is what I do. I got Diddy in my head. I love Diddy. Can't stop. <laughs> won't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop. Can't stop. <laughs> fire love it fire 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 in fact see the on that side that little cassette <laughs> that big little cassette says pause if you must on the label just don't stop that's what that says so that's one of the things sometimes you have to take a pause but just don't stop can't stop won't stop right <laughs> and this is this has been a powerful a powerful panel tonight with just incredible Sorry, like i said dimes dropping Yes. Before we close, I just want to say, um, and I'm, I'm sure I can speak for all the panelists. You're amazing. You're incredible. Yes. You have such positive energy. Yes. yes. So thank you. Yes. Round of applause. Oh, thanks, you. guys. Yeah. Oh, oh no, I have no words. Bees. Almost. <laughs> Dropping <laughs> bees on. That's right. So, guys, um, thank you guys so much for bringing your energy, your knowledge, and bringing the feels over my way. I appreciate you guys. This has been an awesome, awesome panel. So, Nicole, Tia, Reggie, Chinedu, thank you guys so much for bringing it as well. I want to thank our partner, RBC, and the audience in the chat that's firing up right now. They have been awesome. And, of course, make sure you guys are connecting with us on social media. And we're going to send you a survey because we just want these to continue to get better and better. And... Like I said in the beginning, this is our last class, our last class, our last master class for this season. We're going to start up again in December because, you know, we're getting ready for the future, the future at that. So there is one learning session presented by Salesforce on Thursday, September the 2nd at noon for all sales professionals wanting to an opportunity to talk about value based selling. So um that's where you want to sign up if you need to know more about that get in touch with bptn and of course i will see you at the summit on the stage of course and um that's where exactly where you want to be it's free 99 so don't forget to grab your passes and thank you guys so much for joining us um for this last master class of the season and i hope you had a great time like i said share this with a friend and have a fantastic night <laughs>